Good day and thank you for watching the ACS Library. My name is Kyle and my goal is to help you prepare for the private pilot checkride for free in just five minutes a day. In today's video, we cover landing distances for the Piper Archer. Anytime we're talking about performance calculations, we'll want to have our aircraft's POH handy. Today, we'll use a POH from a Piper PA-28-181. Please remember to use the POH specific to your aircraft's serial number. Open up to the table of contents and find the performance section. Once there, let's jump into the performance table of contents and look for landing performance. For the Archer, there are two separate charts. One gives us ground roll distance, which refers to the distance required for an aircraft to decelerate from touchdown speed to the fully stopped position, and the other gives us distance to clear a 50-foot obstacle, which takes it a little further. This is the distance an aircraft would require to land after clearing a 50-foot obstacle at the approach end of a runway, plus the distance required to decelerate to the fully stopped position. We should pay especially close attention to both figures when operating to relatively short fields or those with obstacles at the approach end. We can begin with either chart. Today, let's start with the full distance to clear a 50-foot obstacle. Before diving into the chart, it's always important to read through the notes very carefully. These distances are based on a landing with closed throttle, 40 degrees of flaps, a 66-knot approach, and maximum braking on a paved, dry, level runway. Failure to reduce the power or apply brakes, precipitation, or an unpaved sloping runway would all affect these distances. We need to know four things before we can find our expected landing distance using these charts. They are pressure altitude, temperature, aircraft weight, and winds. Our pressure altitude for this example will be 3,300 feet. I've included a link in the description to a video covering how to calculate pressure altitude. Temperature today is 29 degrees Celsius based on the METAR. Aircraft weight is found during our weight and balance computations. Let's say for today's example that we've got a 2,300 pound plane. Next is winds. We need to find only our headwind or tailwind component. Let's assume that we have a 16 knot headwind component today. If you are unfamiliar with how to find headwind or tailwind components, please check out the video over crosswind component calculations linked in the description below, where I explain how to find headwind and crosswind components with just your calculator and a local METAR. Now that we've got all our data, we can make things really easy by plotting all these values on the chart. Beginning with pressure altitude, we will draw a line following the slanted lines on the left side of the chart where 3,300 feet would fall. Next, we can draw a line straight up from the other three values. Our temperature of 29 degrees Celsius, our weight of 2,300 pounds, and our winds of 16 knots, which we will draw at 15 because 16 doesn't exist on this chart. The line coming up from temperature only needs to go high enough to intersect our pressure altitude curve. Next, we more or less follow along what this dashed line says to do. We can refer to that if we ever forget how to use the chart. Let's go straight up the green line from our temperature until we intersect with our orange pressure altitude line. Next, go straight over to the right until we reach the reference line. Then, we will follow the slanted lines down and to the right until we intersect with our light blue aircraft weight line, at which point we go directly right to the reference line again. Follow these lines down to our pink headwind line at 15 knots, and we may read our expected distance to clear a 50-foot obstacle to the right. In this case, about 1,150 feet. After this, we would want to find our ground roll distance as well. To do so, we would perform the exact same set of steps with the landing ground roll distance chart. Let's go ahead and do that now. First, we plot our data. Then, just like earlier, we go up from our temperature of 29 to our pressure altitude of 3,300. Over to the reference line and down to our aircraft weight of 2,300. Over to the reference line again and down to our headwind of 15 leaving us with our expected ground roll of about 750 feet. One last thing I'd like to mention. If we have a tailwind, we would follow the line slanting up rather than down. Let's recap the steps to find landing distance in the Piper Archer that we've discussed in this video. Step 1. Find the landing distance charts. Step 2. Read the notes. 3. Plot the lines for pressure altitude, temperature, aircraft weight, and wind. 4. Follow along the lines on the chart to find both distance to clear a 50-foot obstacle and ground roll distance. And five, compare those distances to runway lengths to ensure a safe landing. This concludes today's video covering determining landing distance in the Piper Archer. As always, thank you so much for checking out the ACS library. If you've learned something from today's video, I hope that you might like or share it. If you're interested in seeing more, please don't forget to hit the subscribe button and hit the bell to the right of that to enable notifications. Questions and feedback are always welcome in the comments section. Thanks again and safe flying.